feel like superwoman this morning when I fought uh, a bad tantrum of my son. My husband was fine, it was the son this time. <laughs> so uh, when I see this beautiful bridge, it's the Confederation Bridge. It connects mainland New Brunswick to PEI. Unfortunately, I haven't gone to see, see it yet. When I look at this image, I don't think of cold, hard concrete or a system of equations. I think of economic development. I think of prosperity. I understand the importance of strong infrastructure, and I understand the role of civil engineers. When I see this lovely toilet, I don't just think of bodily functions. Actually, I think of uh, potty training of <laughs> my two-year-old. <laughs> But uh, I also think about how important it is for our society to have sewer uh, maintenance systems and uh, sanitary systems so that we stay healthy and strong and prosperous. And I understand the role that mechanical engineers play in keeping us safe and healthy. When I see a lamppost, lighting up a dark corner for pedestrians. I don't think of just power generation and power grids. I think of security and safety again. And I understand the role of electrical engineers. As uh, Aisha alluded and said, I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, I feel ridiculous doing that wearing pastels, but you do what you have to. <laughs> Enough about me, though. What do you do? What are you passionate about? What do you do for a living? But more importantly, what career options were you aware of when you were a child? And as you grow in, grew into adulthood, well, some of you are still growing. <laughs> as you grew into adulthood, did you feel as though anything was holding you back? I recently had an uncomfortable discussion with an inner city um, school principal. She had done an informal study of her own, and she found that her students were aware of about five careers, really good careers, but about five. Policeman, social worker, doctor, nurse, and teacher. One young girl was a bit of an outlier. She said that when she grew up, she wanted to be a prostitute. Now, that young girl probably doesn't know what that means yet. She probably doesn't know how she would be vulnerable to diseases and abuse if she followed that career path. All she knows is her auntie, who she loves and respects, happens to be a prostitute. And she all happens to be the only person in her entire family that has her own vehicle. And this young girl very desperately, very desperately wants to have her own car when she grows up. Misrepresentation, that documentary that came out a few years ago, has this great quote, you can't be what you don't see. This is kind of how we fit in. Our group, Wise Kinetic Energy, uh, has instructors that pr travels all over the province of Manitoba. And we promote the fields of science and engineering to girls and boys everywhere. All of our instructors are currently pursuing the path of getting into the workforce where they are not equally represented. So these are women, these are aboriginals, these are other visible minorities. And these people here happen to be our champions. We encourage our instructors to have as great as a time as they can, to play as much as you can. And as you can see, our instructors don't need much encouragement. I feel fairly safe sharing this photograph with you. The woman on the far right is uh, taking some engineering courses in Australia right now. 
But if anything were to happen to me, please investigate the local Greek community, because they are tight-knit. <laughs> But our, we pay our instructors, but our instructors get a lot more out of it than what we can provide them financially. It's an important opportunity for them to distill the knowledge that they are taking in into something simple, elegant, and approachable. Like I said, our instructors are really our champions. And we travel all over the province of Manitoba. We go to First Nations communities, and we're happy to do so. We go to rural uh, farming communities. We go to northern communities. We try and make ourselves accessible as much as we can. We do work in the city as well, but as much as we can, we like to get out of the city as well. It's always interesting to me how kids get really engaged when you give them the simple little things to help them pray, play pretend. Every day in our science camps, they get to play pretend. They get to discover a different career. And they're just so into it. And it's so effective, too. We do surveys, and the kids are telling us that they are se over 70% more likely to take an extra science course. And they are over 70% more likely to consider a career in science or engineering. This is our son, Noah, who gave me a hard time this morning. <laughs> he uh, is going to be turning two very soon. So it is a strong likelihood, there's no guarantees, but it's a strong likelihood that in 16 years from now, he will graduate high school. It is a strong likelihood that in his early 20s, he will finish a post-secondary degree. It is a strong likelihood that after that, he will be employed in the field in which he studied. But it is not because Noah is more capable. Not at all. It's because of who his parents are. It's because of his grandparents. It's because of his friends and his family and who he's surrounded by. Wise Kinetic Energy, we see over 30,000 youth every year. And we're so excited about all the opportunities that we have to engage with youth. And I'm so proud to be a part of Wise Kinetic Energy. But there are a few things that really stand out for me, that really warm my soul. One of them is our continued outreach to First Nations communities. Another is our Adopt-a-Class program, where we make it possible for inner city schools to see as much of us as they can. And the last is our uh, girls club that we do with the Boys and Girls Club of Winnipeg. Every Saturday during the school year, what happens is that our instructors and a mentor, a female scientist or engineer, meet with the participants and they prepare and share a meal together. Because people really bond through food. And after they have the meal and they have the nutrition to concentrate, they play sports and they have some fun doing science and engineering careers. Now, if after my talk, you decide to go home and playfully inspire your own child, that's wonderful. If you can extend yourself to nieces and nephews, that's great. And if you can make yourself available to the neighborhood kids, that's, that's really good, that, that's commendable. But really, if we're going to break the cycle of poverty, we're going to have to extend ourselves much further than that. I'm an engineer, so it makes sense for me to be a part of wise kinetic energy. But what do you do for a living? Is there a professional body that is doing outreach activities that you can also help out in? And if your professional body isn't doing outreach, 
maybe you should convince them that it's time. Because remember that quote, you can't be what you don't see? Well, everybody here and everybody watching, you need to be seen. You really, really do. The real question is, though, will you?